Last month, Moody's lowered the global long-term and short-term insurer ratings of Growth Point Properties, citing the weakening of its financial metrics following its debt-financed acquisition of the V&A waterfront. Moody's assigned Growth Point's global BAA3 long-term and P3 short-term senior unsecured ratings. The outlook on all ratings is stable. Uh, growth point, 29 billion, the giant in our property sector. Price earnings, 24. Uh, dividend yield, 6.7. But remember, property stocks are paying uh, interest, so it, it's an interest yield and there's a tax implication. Listen, let's come to you first. Uh, El Eleni said it in the intro. Certainly, it's what growth point is saying. They're saying, you know what, the Moody's is, is really just a process because of the VNA transaction. Is that fair shout? I think so, but uh, again, you know, the ratings agencies must look at that and they must uh, raise a flag when, when they see it. So I think uh, that, that's fair dues. But again, I, you know, I look at it and I say, but, you know, getting the v &A was a, a coup, in my opinion. I mean, it was quite strange when, when it went to Bahrain rather than to local and the original uh, yeah. tender. And, you know, getting it back and, and at a reasonable price, in my opinion, I thought that was not bad. Uh, what we've also seen, you know, in terms of uh, news flow is that in Australia they're buying something through their Australian growth point property and that's another 108 or thereabouts Aus dollars. So that's a fairly sizable thing. And, and uh, just the point I'm making is that the word growth in growth point does seem to be there because I can remember when this was a little two billion rand company. Yeah. And the buildings yeah. haven't grown that, that much in terms of each building, but they've added buildings and buildings and suddenly it's 29 billion. That's growth. With regards to total assets, I mean, in total portfolio, we're looking at around 460 properties throughout South Africa and Australia between retail, office and industrial uh, sectors as well. It's quite fascinating that they've gone into the Australian market. We have spoken to the CEO before and not really optimistic about getting into the likes of Africa as yet. Do you think that that is a wise idea at this point in time, that they're just delving into the developed market space as opposed to delving into EMs? Well, I mean, uh, you should probably ask the CEO that. I mean, he, he'll have a much better insight than I would. Um, I mean, property in Africa is always a bit difficult. Property rights, uh, he also, he probably looks at the risk returns in Africa and he's happy, he thinks he can get better returns in South Africa mm -hmm. and other developed markets. They're very diverse between office, retail and industrial. We see some stocks like High Property very much in the, the shopping centre space. They really got a, a good split between the three of them. And, and to my sense, that must play to their favour, perhaps take a little bit of the cyclicality out of the process. Still, property is going to be cyclical, but mm -hmm. a little bit less than perhaps some of the others. Well, I mean, yeah, you're not buying exposure to one specific sector. You're kind of buying it to, to the general property sector in South Africa. Um, I mean, for me, when I look at property, it's, it's more, it's the valuation of these stocks and it's a playoff between interest rates, long-term interest rates. And if I look at long-term interest rates and where we are now, and in my mind, either they go sideways or they rise. I don't see a significant decline in properties in interest rates. And that's, as a result, I'm less excited for property stocks. But isn't, uh, in, in many cases, uh, uh, interest, uh, the increases in terms of, of, of rentals, et cetera, CPI linked, and if interest rates are going up, that's probably because we could be seeing some CPI going up. Sure, but uh, they also do have quite a lot of fixed rate increases in, in a number of their contracts. That's why you can see increases coming through higher than CPI at the moment, which is certainly benefiting them. But obviously, if you get interest rates rising. If they only get behind that curve when the rates start rising. Va vacancy rates are still pretty much a concern. We're sitting in single digits, 8.1% uh, uh, in the office space arena. Is that a concern for you? I mean, is this pretty much a sign of the times at this stage? We know that a lot of uh, businesses are opting to move out of uh, the commercial areas and go into the peripheral areas. Do you see it's, it's well, an interesting trend? Well, again, whether it's, whether it's Growth Point or, or others, yeah. I mean, you drive around and you see to let signs. And I was commenting, I think, the other day to somebody that uh, there's a to let sign that must have been up for at least 18 months now. <laughs> and, and it's a very attractive building in a very attractive part of Cape Town. So I'm saying, golly, if that's having difficulty moving, then times are tough. Yeah. And I don't think we have to bluff ourselves, times are tough. Uh, and it may just be that it's a very large uh, set of space and it may be that it's you know, got a very partic particular shape. I, I, I haven't actually been inside to have a look at it, but what I am saying is yeah, vacancy factors are important, but then they work as a positive. You know, if interest rates are going to rise for the right reasons, which is that we've got economic growth, then we hopefully we'll be getting uh, some of this taken up. So if you're saying we're not seeing a structural issue when it comes to vacancies, that we're seeing a big shift and movement to other areas and 
people like uh, well companies such as growth point are starting to see their assets perhaps uh, getting le lesser well less rent because of the new scenarios that are playing out i haven't heard too much of of uh, you know uh, uh, bids being being accepted for a vacant space i think guys are still holding out for the for the rates that they that they have you know have been been able to achieve the last couple of years uh, and that is different to the past uh, and that's not that long ago back in 2000 or thereabouts we certainly had uh, people prepared to take distressed rentals. They tried to put it through in the escalation clause, but there were only five-year escalations. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 I haven't heard of distressed letting yet. It's just, I mean, one of the things here, 431 properties, they've got v &A, probably the best property asset in South Africa. It, it's that dominance. I mean, it, it, where are you going to find or where are you going to build these other dominant uh, uh, assets, shopping centers, office parks, etc.? And it gives them almost, they're ahead of the race in terms of the, the property space in South Africa, certainly in size. And you can't see anyone beyond mergers and the like taking them over just because we've bought them. I know they're still building like crazy, but we've got the office parks, we've got so much out there, and they own a big chunk of the quality yeah well again you know if you look at somebody like Westfield in, a, in, a, in Australia and you look at Centro in Australia I mean they actually went you know multinational because they really believed they knew how to handle shopping malls in particular both of them um, Westfield came out a lot better than Centro Centro really got into all kinds of difficulties uh, it, so it isn't just because you're big that it'll work and it isn't just because you're in a particular dimension like shopping malls that it's going to be safe for you. It, it, I think which, whatever it is in property, you need to have people at the top who know exactly what they're looking at and they can see some way to turn it to account. Uh, it, and, and that to me, it's a management function. You need to know that it's solid management buying good buildings at good prices. Also fascinating, we've actually seen a few property funds come into markets this year. So do you think that it is perhaps a sign of the times that things are starting to look much better than before? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not particularly great on, on property and it certainly I, th I think if it's a, a way for other people to monetize their, um, their property portfolios and that's why they're bringing it to market. What about the, the construction sector at the moment, completely under the cosh, really struggling? There's an opportunity there for perhaps for big guys like, like uh, Growth Point. Uh, three years ago, we were getting crazy offers to you know, pricing, in other words, they were really ramping up costs. Some of the construction guys might come along and actually do better deals just to get some orders flowing on their books. Could be some opportunities for for company of Growth Point's size and to come to Liston's point, perhaps management. Well, I mean, they, they did talk about in, in V&A where there's a, a large portion that's undeveloped that they want to do. Yeah, some 200,000 square meters. Mm. So, I mean, th there is that. I mean, uh, when you build a building, I mean, the, the biggest cost, your costs aren't the profit margin that the construction company makes. They make a small profit margin, but so, I mean, you don't get massive discounts in this, in this environment. Do you think they overpaid for the V&A? I mean, you said it's at a fair price, but that's still under dispute, Liston. Yeah, I just don't know how you would get to a, pr a price other than some multiple of the rental and then looking at that at the vacant land and saying, well, I think that's what it's worth. I genuinely think they did okay out of that. And and again, just, uh, well, just of interest was the way they announced that Australian deal. And they said, you know, although we're coming out with this rights issue, by the way, Investec uh, um, um, Growth Point Local is taking up all of its rights and underwriting the issue. So mm -hmm. they're quite positive on it. But they said it won't impact their uh, forecast uh, distribution of 9.2%. So in Australia, they're being able to invest at 9.2%. So if you've got that opportunity uh, and uh, you've then got to weigh up whatever you were going to spend in South Africa, uh, you must say they must have used some metric fairly similar to that. Okay, so listen, I know, do you have another question? No, just a quick question on Australia. You mentioned there's some good numbers, 10% or so of revenue. Is Australia perhaps their little secret weapon that maybe the market's ignoring to a degree? Well, I don't think people understand it. But yes, and the fact that they are doing being aggressive in a, in a, in a down market at a in a period of lowish interest rates and with that economy picking up, um, I think they're doing the right thing. And we know that it's your your hot stock pick. Yeah, as I say, I always like to pick my hot stock yes. out of the three so we've got. We know that you I think like it's the hot. <laughs> I like this one. Okay, fantastic. So you think it's hard. Are you buying at these levels? Have you accumulated or do you hold the company already? I don't hold any, but of the uh, property stocks, which I do plan to buy, and maybe I'll wait a little bit for the fear of, a, of an interest rate rise, it yeah. will certainly be right near the top of my, of my, of my property stock. Fantastic. Jonathan, hot, hot or not? Uh, we don't own it and we're not going to buy it, so no, not hot. Okay, not hot. <laughs>
I, I don't I don't own it directly. I have it via an ETF that I well, in fact I have it in a couple of ETFs. I like if you're gonna buy a property, I think it's this one. My preferred was always high prop. There's been some deals there. Yeah. Uh, that yield at six point seven, I think it's a bit low. I would like to see it closer to seven and a half or eight. Um, but if you yeah, maybe if you wait a bit, you're gonna get a yield of six instead. So I I like it, I think I'm gonna put a hot in it. Okay, so would you, I mean, apart from the exposure that you've got via ETF, would you be buying directly? Would I be running out and buying property stocks right now? I think not, and I think because of Jonathan's point, which is at this point in the cycle, if interest rates are going up, shouldn't we rather wait 6, 12, or 18 months? Fantastic. Okay, right. Now we delve into our guest hot stock picks. So we know that Liston says uh, Growth Point is his hot stock pick for today. Jonathan's hot stock pick is Steinoff, mm. which we know rallied significantly in the last trading session, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, Steinoff's our biggest holding in both our equity fund and our, fi and our flexible fund. Um, it's been a recent underperformer. It, I know it did well today, but it's actually had a horrendous June. Um, we like Steinoff. It's, got, uh, it's bought Conferama last year. It's given its critical mass in Europe. It's effectively a European retailer. Um, we think it'll earn slightly more than what consensus has for this year and going forward we think it, on next year's earnings on, it's on about a 7.5 PE. If you look at similar retailers in Europe they sit at about 12. So, and then Steinhoff's going to take Conferama, put it onto its Steinhoff International platform, hopefully push margins as a result of that and in 24 months it might list internationally which will give it further. So 22 content. Rand 75 still looking attractive, you'd still buy. Yeah, well, we virtually at our maximums. We, you know, we've okay. got a big overweight position. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get a Can't seat in anymore. the board. <laughs> yeah, okay. basically. Uh, Simon. I, I do like Steinhoff. I like their business model. Uh, produce, own, you know, own the whole chain, grow the wood in Eastern Europe where it's cheap, produce Eastern Europe, ship, sell it to the French and the, U and the Brits at a nice high price. Um, I've just always, when I, when I look at their results, I, I, they, they confuse me, they give me a headache. I've always struggled to really <laughs> pull it apart and, and truly understand it, kick the tires in a, in I a sense. I think it could help you that listen what is your <laughs> view on Steinhoff hot or not for you uh, at these prices probably not I know, I know I know they had a bad bit and they've had and, and they've risen today I just always think that uh, as Simon is saying that there's a little bit of skepticism that comes to me when I when I get to the results and I say but they should have done better but I can never find out exactly why not and there must be something lurking somewhere so I'm a little bit confused as well so I just think that's probably their biggest problem at the moment